life expectancy of average Canadian age is 82. That's a good age. Do you agree? But five years ago, I was told on a visit of nurse, we don't have many elderly who are over 65 in our community. This is true to the indigenous of peoples of Canada. This is why I'm on the stage today. I came to Canada a long time ago from South Korea to obtain a graduate degree from the University of Alberta. At that time, I was new to Canada and didn't know much about Canadian history and also people living here before colonialism. When I came to the University of Manitoba as an academic member about 14 years ago, I still didn't know much about indigenous peoples and was even confused who the aboriginals, indigenous, and the First Nations people are. I was more focused on surviving as a new professor. <laughs> I believe there are many people like me around who are unaware of the struggles faced by northern indigenous communities. Regarding something as simple as food accessibility, it's a their problem, not mine. That was me. Until 2014, I received some funds to find out the nutritional status of the pregnant First Nations woman. While knocking on several doors of the First Nation reserves, a Pasquia Cree Nation in the Pa opened the door for us. I will refer this community as OCN from now on, for simplicity's sake. The health director, Mr. Glenn Rosa, said that they would help our study, but ask us to help their people. He expressed that all the health issues around in their community stem from nutrition. Since then, I drove to the park with my graduate student almost every month until last year. It was a seven-hour drive, at least for me. One of the bonuses of this project is I got to see all two seasons of Manitoba up north. <laughs> yes. I said too. <laughs> like many northern indigenous communities, Ocean suffers with some health issues. About 47% of their adult populations are diagnosed with diabetes, which is over double the reported findings from the First Nation Regional Health Survey. Also, there are not many elderly members in the community which is opposite trend of our remarkably growing aging populations. In fact, the projected life expectancy of the aboriginals and indigenous are much shorter than non-indigenous people. First Nations and Métis peoples are 76, Inuit is 69. Why do some people live a shorter lives? while suffering so many health conditions. How does this even happen when we live under the same Canadian sky? Food is medicine. The quality of food and nutrition plays a significant role for the quality of life. As a nutrition scientist, I know the importance of what goes in our body is a vital to maintain optimal health and fight diseases. However, what happens when the right kinds of food are not available, accessible, and affordable, especially fr fresh fruits and vegetables in the northern communities? We lose many nutrition values and balances on our menu, and our dining table becomes a dying table. Are there any solutions? Is there a way to supply fresh fruits and vegetables to the northern parts of Canada? 
Yes, simply by growing them up north. There is already a team in action in Manitoba. In early 2016, Opasikiak has established a smart indoor vertical farm on their reserve, which grows the vegetables on the layers of the shelves using hydroponic system. This system relies on most recent technologies from South Korea, which include a computer-assisted optimal growth controlling system for LED lights, temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide, and nutrients. Products from the indoor farming systems are commonly consumed in countries with high-density populations, such as Korea, Japan, and Netherlands. In Canada, however, its reputation is relatively low because we farm horizontally. Due to the long winters here, this space-efficient vertical farm in OCN will provide huge opportunities to provide the fresh and affordable vegetables all year round, not only to their own community, but also to the northern regions of Manitoba. Interestingly, this smart farm came to OCM by chance. Korean transmission businessmen came to Canada to pitch an idea to Manitoba Hydro. They didn't know our mild Canadian winters and were brave enough to drive up north in January to visit the site. And got stuck in a ditch. <laughs> it happened to be ocean land, and the, the locals helped the Koreans out. This is the start of a new partnership between OCN and South Korea. Through the pilot test in June of 2016, they showed evidence of growing 40 different types with 100 different varieties of vegetables, herbs, and some fruits. During this time, I was in OCN for my own projects, working with a pregnant mother. And since I'm Korean, I was smoothly integrated into this vertical farm project. We have analyzed and found that vegetables grown in OCN system are herbicide-free, pesticide-free, and also have a higher nutrient concentrations compared to the same vegetables sold in the local grocery stores. With this, we saw the potential to grow more nutrient and niche the vegetables, and also vegetables which will cost significantly less than the local grocery stores without typical seasonal fluctuations in the price. Now the community has started to enjoy these vegetables, becoming less resistant to the vegetables grown in these new farming systems. And some high school students are getting trained in the smart vertical farm and will receive some credits as part of their regular high school curriculum. They see it as a high technology computer job, not as traditional farming. While the community is getting used to new addition to their dinner tables, we want to move this project to the next level, growing functional vegetables. What are the functional vegetables? They are the vegetables that is enriched in specific compounds which could combat or prevent the diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and even cancer. For example, ice plant is known to be anti-diabetic vegetable, but only grow in a warm environment. OCN has tried and succeeded to grow this vegetable in their vertical farm. Can you grow more functional vegetables then? Can you enrich more specific compounds? To answer this, OCN Smart Farm and the University of Manitoba teamed up with the South Korean partners last year. This project is 
to identify and grow more functional vegetables, specifically targeting the health of chronic diseases based in the northern communities. We need to have a mass production of this vegetable to further grow and to uh, further develop value-added functional health food products. If they can generate some revenues with this, the sustainability of a vegetable farm can last a long time. The last part of this project is to show some evidence of measurable health outcomes, such as improving diabetes with the functional vegetables. The community wants to be changed before it's too late. They said, we need to make a change. And in order to improve the quality and longevity of lives, we need to replace all the habits with the new healthier ones. The establishment of a smart vertical farm will support their endeavors by providing year-round fresh and affordable vegetables, which will improve their food security as well as the quality of lives. As a community, OCN will be a role model for other northern indigenous communities across Canada. It's a difficult to start anything new, but I'm excited by the work that is happening. I urge you to think the socio-economic and environmental forces that guide the food onto your table. It's a well-known. A healthy mind in healthy body. But it cannot be achieved when the right kinds of food are not available accessible, and affordable. Farming to the sky will not only provide nutrient and niche to produce, but also it's a step toward abolishing operation enforced on our body and mind by the constant bombardment of processed food around us. Can you imagine? If a vertical farm were in every northern community, we can also use them in the urban ones as well. Healthy Canadians lead to a healthy future for Canada. Thank you. <laughs>